On behalf of the Olympia Steering Committee members and trial investigators, it is my pleasure to present the quality of life results from Olympia. Olympia is a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of adjuvant therapy with Olaparib in high-risk breast cancer patients with germline mutations in BRCA1 or BRCA2. In this international trial, Olaparib or placebo were given for one year after eligible patients had completed adjuvant chemotherapy treatments. At an interim analysis earlier this year, the boundary for reporting invasive disease-free survival was reached favoring Olaparib. However, overall survival did not reach the pre-specified threshold at that time, and the trial is continuing. Research has demonstrated that chemotherapy has substantial acute toxicities, leaving patients with fatigue and decreased physical functioning at the end of treatment, requiring as much as one to two years to recover to pretreatment levels. In Olympia, patient-reported outcomes were collected to inform discussions between physicians and their patients regarding risks and benefits of this additional adjuvant therapy. The central question for Olympia Pro study is to understand whether or not Olaparib might exacerbate end-of-treatment symptoms, such as fatigue, and possibly delay improvement in quality of life after chemotherapy. This slide shows the overall trial design with a focus on the PRO assessments. The PRO study analyzed outcomes from the two separate chemotherapy groups, given their large sample sizes and potential for having baseline PRO scores that might differ. PRO assessments were planned in all enrolled Olympia patients prior to randomization, and then every six months for 24 months. This schedule captured PRO assessments during the year on treatment and the year after treatment ended. The primary hypothesis of the PRO study focused on whether or not patients treated with Olaparib might experience greater fatigue severity during treatment compared to those receiving placebo. This was based on preliminary evidence from phase two studies of Olaparib that reported a high frequency of fatigue as an AE. Secondary hypotheses evaluated whether fatigue experienced on treatment with Olaparib would resolve after the end of treatment. Although we hypothesized greater severity of gastrointestinal symptoms during treatment with Olaparib, we expected these symptoms would resolve in the subsequent year. Additional secondary hypotheses focused on improvements in quality of life over the 24 months of observation, and we expected no differences between Olaparib and placebo. The primary PRO study objective focused on the effect of Olaparib on patient-reported fatigue compared to placebo at 6 and 12 months after randomization using the FACET fatigue questionnaire. Secondary objectives examined whether fatigue persisted during the 12 to 24 months time period after treatment ended and assessed several gastrointestinal symptoms and various dimensions of quality of life across the entire 24 months of data collection. These pros were assessed using the EORTC Core Quality of Life Questionnaire. These two questionnaires were selected due to their reliability and validity in multiple languages of patients enrolled in this international trial. Although the early reporting of the PRO study outcomes was not planned for, the large number of patients enrolled in Olympia provided sufficient statistical power for the analysis of the primary endpoint, which was the comparison of the facet fatigue scale score between Olaparib and placebo at six and 12 months. There was greater than 90% power to detect a three point difference on the facet fatigue scale primary endpoint with this difference being between treatments being the basis for a clinically meaningful measured difference. Additional analyses of secondary endpoints are planned for the next data cutoff time point. The consort diagram shows the flow of patients included in the current PRO analysis. Although all patients enrolled and subsequently randomized in Olympia were expected to complete baseline and follow-up PRO assessments, 85 were excluded for various reasons noted here. In addition, no quality of life follow-up data were available in 216 patients. The final PRO analysis sample included patients who had at least one evaluable baseline score, had initiated treatment, and for U.S. patients had consented to the PRO substudy.
Demographic baseline characteristics include everyone enrolled in the PRO substudy and demonstrates good balance between the two treatment assignments, including distribution by race and geographic region. Clinical characteristics are based on everyone enrolled in the PRO substudy and shows a similar distribution of clinical characteristics by treatment assignment. This slide shows the baseline PRO scores by chemotherapy group and treatment assignments. Within each chemotherapy group, there are no differences in scores by treatment assignment. However, the neoadjuvant chemotherapy group has slightly worse scores on fatigue severity and the EORTC functioning scales uh, compared to the adjuvant therapy group. The facet fatigue score at this baseline assessment, highlighted in blue, is three points lower or worse than in healthy women, which is a clinically meaningful difference supporting our rationale for focusing on this symptom in Olympia. In contrast, the GI symptoms are not increased in severity. Finally, the global health, physical, and emotional scales are about 0.3 to 0.5 standard deviations below pretreatment scores in breast cancer patients entering adjuvant trials, supporting the expected impact of prior chemotherapy. The primary objective of the PRO analysis focused on the comparison of the facet fatigue change score from baseline at 6 and 12 months. Patients treated with Olaparib experienced slightly greater fatigue severity increase than the patients who received placebo, as noted in the blue highlighted box. However, this did not meet the pre-specified clinically meaningful difference of three points on this scale. In the tables on the left, we show the entire 24 months of facet fatigue scores for both chemotherapy groups, showing mean score differences between Olaparib and placebo. The graphs in the middle plot the average change scores from baseline in the two chemotherapy groups, while there are small differences between Olaparib and placebo at six and 12 month assessments, we can see that there are no significant differences at 18 and 24 months. The tables at the left show the scores reported for nausea and vomiting in the Olaparib and placebo groups. In the neoadjuvant therapy group, there are significant and clinically meaningful increases in this symptom at 6 and 12 months, which is only the case at 6 months in the adjuvant therapy group. The graphs in the middle show the change from baseline for nausea and vomiting severity, which returns to pretreatment levels at 18 and 24 months. Diarrhea was not increased in either the Olaparib or placebo groups, and there was no difference between Olaparib and placebo over time. There was no clinically meaningful difference between Olaparib and placebo for physical functioning over time for either chemotherapy group. There was no clinically meaningful difference between Olaparib and placebo for emotional functioning over time in either chemotherapy group. There was no clinically meaningful difference between Olaparib and placebo for global health status in either chemotherapy group. In conclusion, for the primary quality of life outcome measured by the facet fatigue, the difference between Olaparib and placebo at 6 and 12 months did not meet the protocol specified clinically meaningful difference in fatigue severity with recovery in the following year. Patients who received Olaparib had greater severity of nausea and vomiting than placebo-treated patients, which was consistent with clinically reported AEs in the primary report of treatment outcomes. However, these symptoms resolved after treatment ended. Finally, there was no reported increase in diarrhea with Olaparib and no meaningful differences in the quality of life, global health, and functioning scores of the EORTC. The current analyses occurred before the completion of all quality of life data collection, and with complete data in the future, there may be a better estimate of quality of life recovery in the year after the end of Olaparib treatment. The final analyses of the PRO study will be able to examine the role of important treatment-related covariates as they may interact with symptoms and quality of life in patients receiving Olaparib. 
The study designed for the invasive disease-free endpoint had higher power for the pro endpoints, leading to detection of clinically insignificant differences. In summary, Olaparib was well tolerated as adjuvant therapy with no clinically meaningful increase in fatigue during treatment or significant impact on quality of life. While Olaparib treatment led to slight increases in severity of nausea and vomiting, it did not persist after treatment ended. Scores on physical and emotional functioning, as well as global health, slowly improved during the 24 months after adjuvant chemotherapy, and one year of Olaparib did not meaningfully affect this recovery. We would like to acknowledge all of those who made this trial possible and to thank you for your attention to this presentation. Thank you.